It's video. <laughs> we're gonna do this in tandem. <laughs> <laughs> we received a dare. Don't separate our faces from each other for the whole episode. Whole video. <laughs> he hate me. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're going to be working on Lucas' car. So if you guys saw the previous suspension videos, Lucas' car got an absolute insane overhaul. We put basically five grand almost worth of suspension stuff into the car. Now, we're not done there. The car's not done yet. The track isn't ready yet. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing a bunch of upgraded coolant parts on Lucas' FRS. So, Luca, walk us through what you got. Sure. Starting off with an upgraded Mishimoto radiator, which is more than two, two times as thick as the OEM unit, which will help a lot with coolant for our uh, coolant system. After that, we have a slim profile aluminum fan shroud, also from Mishimoto. This is a lot thinner than the OEM unit, which will give boosted people a lot more room in the engine bay for their downpipe and turbo setup, as well as provide the same airflow at idle as the OEM unit. We also have Mishimoto upgraded coolant hoses, HPS upgraded heater core hoses, a Koyo Rad aluminum filler neck with high pressure cap, as well as a Mishimoto racing thermostat. Now guys, all of this is gonna help my FRS be wicked at the track and stay cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> All the products that are found behind us have warranties with them. The Mishimoto parts come with a lifetime warranty, whereas the HPS and Koyo Rad parts come with a limited warranty. Now, I'm not bashing the Koyo or the HPS stuff because they do have really good quality parts. I have HPS stuff on my Z and Accord with no issues, and this has been a couple years later. So if you guys are considering this and you know that warranty is really crucial, Mishimoto is where it's at. But you guys can still get some awesome parts just like Luca did. So we're gonna begin with the install by taking off the front bumper. So next up with the bumper off, we need to remove the intake system. So there's gonna be a bunch of parts that are covering the top part uh, of the rad and the AC condenser. We need to remove all of that out of the way. So we're gonna begin with the intake. We're gonna remove all the components that are found up here. So we have this intake piece, we have the air dam, we have the coolant overflow tank, we have this connection right here. This is all a part of the cooling system and the coolant lines need to be evacuated of all the fluid before we can remove all this stuff. Now we're gonna do that so that we try and limit the amount of mess that we're gonna make when we take all this stuff out. So a cool little trick that Luca figured out, if you remove the hose that's connected up to the overflow tank right here, goes from there to in there, see the little nipple on the end? If you remove that and you install it on the edge of the pepcock down here, you can drain out all the coolant and you can put it inside an external reservoir, save it and either use it for later or you can replace it with a new one. But it eliminates the amount of mess that's gonna be happening down in here. So with the car now in this state, we can go to the back side of the car, found in here, and you can see on the back side of the fan shroud, there's two connectors that are found on the passenger side. The lower one there connects up for the driver side fan, and the raised one up there connects to the passenger side one. So you should be able to just push them out from the top by pushing down the little clip, removing them, and then that should be everything that's holding the fan shroud in place. With the expansion tank now removed, we can remove both of these coolant hoses along with the coolant neck found up here that secures it all in place. So the rad cap would go actually over top of that. So to remove these, you can use a regular pair of needle nose pliers or some fancier tools like proper tools to get that done. Now, if you guys have some really hard to get to hoses and clamps, that extra tool would definitely come in handy. But for this car, it actually seems to be pretty easy. But the one hose down here that looks to be difficult is the lower rad hose that connects under the car and it looks like it's right by the exhaust manifold. So we're gonna get to that in a second, but for the first part, we're gonna just remove the hoses that are found up here. Now there's gonna be two brackets that are securing the radiator up into the car. So there's gonna be one of them found right here and it's gonna be secured in place by two 10 milliliter bolts. So that's driver's side and you'll find the exact same thing on the passenger side, right in there. Both are 10 mils. Remove those, and then the radiator is not gonna be secured into anything else. So after that's done, you can go down, and then we need to remove this hose down here. This is the lower rad hose. There's gonna be one clamp there, 
another one on the bottom. So we're going to be replacing all of these rubber hoses. We're going to be replacing this entire fan shroud. We're going to be replacing the entire radiator, the OEM one, and we're going to be replacing it with all better stuff. Once we remove all of that, down in there, in between the little bracket that secures up to the uh, coolant hose, there's going to be the thermostat. So we're going to be replacing that as well. One last thing, the AC condenser needs to be separated from the rad, and there's four 10 millimeter bolts that are securing it in, two on this side, and then two on this side. So with those removed, and the lower rad hose down there removed, we should be able to lift this entire thing up and out. Now just be careful because the radiator is wider than the opening up here, so if you push it back and lift it up, it should make life a little bit easier. So as Luca's licking the engine bay clean, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the radiators. So the upgraded one from Michi is a lot thicker just from the looks of it. So we're looking at nearly 30 millimeters thick. Now the OEM one, you can tell straight out of the bat, it's nowhere near that. It's half that maybe. So the OEM one is 12.8 millimeters. So that's gonna be a huge difference. So we're gonna begin now working with the new radiator. So we have this face down, this here is the bottom, this side here is the top. So what we're gonna begin with doing is with it down, face down like that, we're gonna grab our new upgraded fan shroud, and we're gonna basically lay it over top and slide it into each one of these little grooves here. So there's gonna be one of them down here, this is the bottom, and you can see it just sits right in there. So this goes right over top. You can see that we've got the two fans over top. This is an entire aluminum black powder coated housing. And you can see these little parts here. This is where the bolt goes in to secure it into place. These two little stub things that you see here are installed so we can install the overflow tank onto here. So because this is a lot thinner of size, like the fan shroud, uh, we need to install these to basically compensate for that size difference. So this all looks really nice. Wires are all hooked up. This is a full direct plug and play system. So we've got the one clip there and then the other one right there. So this should go in really nicely. So this here is what's attached to the bottom side of the engine. So this is where the lower rad hose would go. Now, if you remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that are found on here and here, you'll see that there's a thermostat that's found inside of it. So this is the stock thermostat. It opens up at 88 degrees Celsius. So can you see that on the top, right? 88 Celsius. So we're gonna be removing this one. This is the stock piece. There's nothing wrong with it. We're gonna be taking that out and we're gonna be installing this upgraded Mishimoto one. So the nice thing about this is that not only does it have a lifetime warranty, it's got new seals, which is awesome, but this will open up at a lower temperature. So this one here, if you guys can see that on the top, it says it's opening up at 76 Celsius. So this means that the coolant and engine and everything is gonna be running cooler. And we're gonna be putting this back in in the same way that we took everything out. So make sure that the pin is facing the back and you have the O-ring facing up. This is gonna ensure a proper seal. Now you can reuse the two bolts that we took out. They're two 10 mils. Just put those right back in the way you had them. And if you guys want a torque spec, we'll have that in the description box. So we're gonna be putting that in before we can put the new rad and silicone hoses in the engine bay. With the thermostat now installed through this little port here, we pushed that little window down and we were able to install that from in here. You can also go underneath and remove the skid plate, but it's entirely optional. So following that, we're gonna be installing this upgraded Michi Rad. So this guy is 34 millimeters thick and the bottom parts, you guys can see those like little nipples that come out, those fit into the OEM spots that the old one was in. So this is a little bit bigger. We're gonna notice a massive difference in cooling and we're gonna also notice that the temperature of the coolant is going to be staying lower. So that means that Luke is gonna be able to beat this car on the track, he's gonna be able to get it you know, up to operating temperatures easier, and once that's done, you know, the car will be cool. It'll be staying nice and cool. So even on a super hot day, the car is not gonna be overheating. So with those down on the bottom pushed in, they're pretty much secured. These little arms here bolt up in the same spot as before with those two 10 millimeter bolts. So Luke is working on this side right here. So we're going to be installing one part at a time. Following this is going to be the fan shroud. Now that these Mishi parts are now installed, we're going to be installing the other Mishi Moto parts. So we have the Mishi silicone hoses. So take a look at all the, the reinforced layers of nylon that are found on the inside. So we have one of them found here. This is going to connect up to the coil part which is the metal filler neck. Comes with a better uh, cap on top. There's that. We have the other piece right there that leads to the block. And then we have the other component here that goes to the lower part. So this goes in between the part of the rad down here and then the thermostat housing down on the bottom. Now with all of this installed, we're gonna be able to get 
all of these hoses up to high temps. We're gonna be able to see these things last a long time and we'll never, in theory, have to replace them. This last little small piece goes inside of the coolant expansion tank. So it goes in there, similar to that. It connects up to the side right there of the Koyo component. So with all that in, we're gonna see a nice upgrade in cooling. So after everything's all said and done, the front end should look something like this. So you can see that we have all these front plastic pieces reinstalled. The front rad, we cannot necessarily see it because we have the AC condenser in front of it, but when you come up here, you'll definitely be able to see the modifications and upgrades that are now installed in the engine bay. So we have the Mishimoto coolant lines, we have the Koyo rad coolant neck up top there, we have all the other lines installed, and we have the lower one down here attached to the bottom of the engine, and the thermostat is going to be sandwiched in between there. So you can see also the new Mishi rad fans. Looks pretty stealth, doesn't look too crazy, but uh, it definitely does look good, and we're gonna have a massive difference in cooling once this is all installed. So next up comes installing the heater core hoses. So Mishimoto does not make these components, these are from HPS. So you can see that these are also silicone reinforced hoses, and these are gonna be replacing the standard rubber ones that are found on the backside of the engine. There's gonna be an inlet and an outlet tube, so there's gonna be two of them there, going to the heater core which is found inside the vehicle, and they lead to about right about here. So we're gonna be taking those pieces out and replacing them with these two new ones. Once you get those heater core hoses installed, it's pretty much just a matter of putting all the intake stuff and bumper back on, and then the car should be good to go. We'll show you the coolant bleeding procedure for this car. It's quite simple. Step one, get one of these. Step two, give it to Luca. Step three, find out which of the attachments you need to install this onto your little port on top where you're, we're gonna put all the new coolant into. Step four, don't use any of the attachments. Step five, send it. Now the coolant that we're gonna be putting in is the same stuff that the Toyota uses. So Subaru or Toyota, you need the blue long life coolant. We're gonna be putting this in, it's pre-diluted. You literally just put it inside of here until it stops. So it just stopped bubbling. We used one full four liter jug. And Luca, how much do we still have left in there? We still have about a third in here and then whatever that is. So we probably have still about half in total left over. So we'll be able to take this out when we put like the little stopper in it. Um, so we're not gonna be wasting any. The next step is to turn on your car and put the heater on full for uh, so that the heater core can circulate some of the fluid and let the car warm up. So with the car now on, the coolant should circulate as soon as the thermostat that's found down underneath opens up. Now while that's happening, I'm gonna be grabbing a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm gonna be opening up the little bleed port right here. And I'm gonna have it so that all the air that's in the system will evacuate and only new coolant will be installed inside each of the lines. Now if you do notice a couple smells or maybe like a little bit of smoke coming out, that's all completely normal. You should notice that as soon as everything warms up. So if you painted anything, if you have new coolant in, if you're putting new parts in, you know, don't be alarmed. You can see there's a little bit of like smoke coming out now. That's completely normal. If it lasts more than a couple days or even a couple heat cycles, that's when you should be concerned. So Luca was telling me that the coolant was staying at about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the like the operating temperature of the coolant. Now that basically translates to a little bit over 90 degrees Celsius, where the OEM thermostat opened up at 88 degrees. So that's, you know, pretty good. That's a pretty good efficient cooling system for stock and without beating on the car. So this new thermostat opens up at a lot colder of a temperature and we should expect to see an extra degree or two above when that thermostat opens. So that essentially translates to 172 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what we should be expecting on Luca's, uh, what's the tablet called? It'd be my OFT. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll get the car warmed up, get everything bled, and then we'll take it down the back roads to see what it can actually do. So we're now inside Luca's car. Down here we've got the heat, and with it turned on, you should get a lot of heat coming out of here. You can see on Luca's OTF tablet that the coolant right now is 174 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is good. With that coolant port bled, you should be able to feel heat through here. If you can't, you need to let the engine warm up a little bit more, 
crack the little bleeder screw that's found in the engine that Luca's doing right now, and then turn this on max. If this is not on max heat, on max like hot, uh, turn it to that, and you should be able to feel something out of here. Right now, this is definitely warm. I can feel this working. And you can see that the temperature is actually cooling down because we have essentially another radiator taking heat from the, the coolant and shedding it off into ambient heat inside the cabin. So before you remove this little funnel from the car, we need to turn the car off and leave that open so that when that happens, any extra coolant can circulate through these hoses and you should be able to see this bubble a little bit more, just like that. So when it stops bubbling, you know you're gonna be good. You can then put this in the center and then you can fill your expansion tank if you need any more, but otherwise you can put that back inside your coolant container here and then save it for later should you need it. Alrighty guys, so this is uh, a week after the install. So the install went good. We haven't seen any problems with the coolant since well, the install, since the, the work that we put into it. So at this point now, what we're expecting to see is the temperature for the coolant to stay super low. So it is currently 25 degrees out right now. It's a hot, nice day. Um, the temperatures for the coolant used to exceed 200 degrees like it was nothing. Now, the hottest that I've seen this is get it up to 208, and that is only when the car is idling. When you're driving, the coolant doesn't exceed 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is incredible. So that means everything is staying super cool. The coolant, the thermostat, the new lines, and the upgraded radiator with the fan shroud all made a huge difference. So right now, I'm looking at the coolant temperature, and it's staying at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the only time that it ever goes up is when there isn't a lot of airflow. Even when the temperatures do get up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and 208 when you're, like, let's say, stuck in traffic, that is still pretty much stock. So those temperatures aren't exactly danger temperatures, but when you're driving, you are definitely seeing a decrease in temps. Now, before with the old stock stuff, we would not see temperatures stay that low when you're driving. The temperature would stay around 200-ish, and it wouldn't go any lower. With this, we noticed a huge temperature decrease. So right now, I'm not really pushing on it, and I'm at 174 Fahrenheit. That's pretty good if you ask me. With all of this coolant stuff done for Michi, we definitely noticed the decrease in temperatures. So what does that mean? It means we can beat on the car harder, and we're not gonna be seeing super high temps. pull right there the temperature went up two degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> that is not bad <laughs> 25 degrees out I'd say that's pretty impressive so this means that if we leave the car NA the cooling system is gonna be more than good enough for the track it also means that if we decide to boost the car the boost is going to eventually raise the temperatures but this cooling system will be able to handle that and keep it down so I definitely think this is a pass if you guys put different suspension on your car, you're not really gonna notice a big difference until you go to the track. You might feel a difference, but right now with this coolant stuff, I can literally see a temperature difference on Luca's little OFT tablet that he has right here. So all of this coolant stuff, I say definitely is worth it. It is a little bit on the pricey side. You guys can find all the prices for everything in the description box, um, but Overall, if you guys plan on beating your car and you guys want a, a good cooling system, or if you guys live down south where you're seeing temperatures much hotter than 25, yeah, this is a definite upgrade. The thermostat opens up at a lower temperature, which means it can flow all that coolant better. The radiator can handle all that super high temperature and it can shed it off super easily. The one thing that I'm not necessarily impressed with is the fan shroud, but maybe this is only the first initial testing. Maybe I'm missing a part of it. Uh, but anyways, if you guys want to find any of the stuff that you guys saw in this video, tools, products, whatever, or more information, description box down there. If you aren't following us on Instagram, do that. More information is down there. If you aren't subscribed, do it. 
We've got new car parts, new mods, new everything coming up for all these cars. So definitely do that. If you have any further questions, comment sections down there. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.